we're now called to order the uh, Juvenile Justice Committee meeting for the Georgia House. The first bill that we're going to hear is Senate Bill 20. It's carried by Senator Payne. Senator Payne, if you'd like to come forward and present your bill. Right there on the corner. Yeah, right there. Just snag a chair. Well, you know, I'll just, just hold the microphone in front of me, I could. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, this is a Senate Bill 20. It's simply a bill to amend Article 11, of Chapter 11 of Title 15, the Child Georgia Child Care, Child Advocate for the Protection of Children Act. And it's simply just to add three new positions to represent the interest of foster care in our, in our state and those in foster care. And it's to, to the Child Advocate Advisory Committee. And that's one current or former foster parent appointed by the governor, one former foster child who has attained the age of majority, who's graduated from high school while still in Georgia, foster care system appointed by the Lieutenant Governor. And one individual has served for at least three years as a court appointed special advocate or CASA appointed by the Speaker of the House of Representatives. All right. Thank you, sir, for that very succinct uh, presentation. Members of the committee, do you have any questions? Members of the committee here, physically present, do you have any questions? Seeing none, um, those on Zoom, do you have any questions? Oh, hold on. Uh, Senator, uh, I'm sorry, Representative Cantor. At the appropriate time, I'd like to make a motion. Okay, are there any questions online? Seeing none, uh, I will re recognize Representative Cantrell for a motion. I move do pass. There is a move do pass. There is a second from Representative Collins. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you for carrying this. Thank you. Senator Payne, Senator, you will need this. You have to ask for your bill and rules. Um, I have a handy form for you. It's already signed. There you are. You have to take it to the rules. Yep. <laughs> the Chairman Smith's office. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, the next bill that we're going to hear is Senate Bill 28. We are working from LC 338495ES. Um, so I'm going to represent Senator Hatchett to present the bill. Oh, EC, yes, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Members of the committee, do you mind if I take my mask off, I'll present? Okay. Thank you for allowing me to bring this bill. Uh, this is a governor's bill, um, and the um, <clears throat> goal of this bill is to clean up some language in the juvenile code um, after the juvenile justice reform under the deal administration, uh, eight to nine years worth of that code. There's obviously some um, issues that have been spotted and what this bill, uh, the purpose of this bill is to basically clean up and, and, and solve any ambiguities uh, that, that was left in the code. Um, it is a long bill. There are a lot of sections. Um, I can go through them one by one, or if, if, I, if, if the chairwoman would like, I can entertain any questions. Okay, if you'll just take us briefly um, through the sections, just kind of give us a brief overview, um, because there is fairly substantial changes um, that are being made to the juvenile code. So if you could um, just kind of give us an overview of each section, yeah, that would be great. Okay, so section one clarifies that the um, DJJ staff acting as juvenile court intake officers may make intake decisions for complaints alleging delinquency or children in need of services to correct misinterpret, misinterp, excuse me, misinterpretation arising from statutory amendments made in 2019 by House Bill 472. Um, it also up, updates the juvenile code definition to reflect um, legal impossibility of child prostitution after enactment of the safe harbor legislation. Um, let's see. Lines 29 strikes reference to placement of a child to more accurately reflect the legal effect of an order for a temporary alternative to foster care, which is not meant to effectuate a custody transfer. 
And then uh, line 30 corrects a Scrivener's error from HB 472, changing the order of, that's just a minor change. If we move on to section two, uh, lines 34 to 43, revise the statutory language enacted by House Bill 472 in 2019 to clarify that the training for juvenile court intake officers consists of an initial eight hours and two hours annually thereafter, rather than eight hours annually. So it's kind of the continuing education there. Um, okay, and, and the folks, um, I, th I think that uh, Senator Hatchett probably prepared this with an earlier version um, of that. Those, uh, the training portion of that will be found on lines 31 through 35. Excuse me. Um, so that's Thank fine. Thank you for catching that. If that's okay. If you'll continue with section three. Yeah, so section three, um, lines, line 55 provides for more, and I want to make sure my lines are correct now, so I'm going to start double checking these. <clears throat> It provides for more precise phrasing, referring to an order for temporary alternatives to foster care. I want to make sure that's right. Okay, so my, my summary and my lines are going to be off just a little bit. And I apologize for that. Oh, that's okay. It, it happens whenever we, uh, you know, get through the process and things start changing. So right. <laughs> I certainly understand. Um, then further down in section three, around lines 5781 in the old version, which are now, what it does is it proposed amendments. These proposed amendments are designed to conform the statutory scheme authorizing juvenile courts to enter orders for temporary alternatives to foster care, uh, originally enacted by House Bill 472 in 2019, more closely with existing law and routine child welfare practice to avoid potential problems with the court directing custody um, excuse me. It would also allow the courts to support any voluntary arrangement that a parent entered into with defects, which could include the child residing with a relative or other uh, f um, family caregiver okay. or familiar caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, the, the proposed amendments at line 61 to 78 um, set forth the specific kinds of orders that would constitute a temporary alternative to foster care, including ordering defects to provide services. And um, further down at, at lines 103 to 105 and 108 to 110, I'll make sure, and I know my numbers are off. Okay, so just to sum up, section three is allowing for temporary protective orders um, to be um, entered into by the juvenile court to allow for alternatives for foster care um, and 76 through 77 say that um, the child can be placed with child or relative or fictive kin, which uh, we've been through fictive kin quite a bit as a committee. Um, so we're all well aware of that. Um, and then um, uh, that pretty much concludes that section. Um, there's just some cleanup language on lines 96 through 100. So we're on to section four now. Uh, so walking through section four, the uh, this just allows for the court doesn't it senator allow for the court to um, hear any evidence including hearsay evidence um, such as would be provided by a casa or teacher or somebody like that who had heard a report like a defects worker if they had interviewed a teacher would be able to inform the court as to the teacher's report but not necessarily the teacher have to testify as as it would be yes. a first person it's, so that would be considered hearsay correct 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 okay um section five is another change for the temporary alternatives to foster care that was proposed in section one mm-hmm Section six clarif clarifies that an adjudication hearing for a child who is not in foster care must be held within 60 days from the filing of the petition, regardless of whether a temporary alternative to foster care order had been issued. Mm -hmm. um, section seven is a non substantive change substituting semicolons, uh, just kind of some gra grammatical errors. Um, and then also uh, there are some policy change, excuse me, uh, certain lines reflect the that the same policy change found in sections four, seven, eight, nine, and 10, correcting a drafting omission in the 2013 Juvenile Justice Reform Act mm -hmm. um, to authorize juvenile court to accept all relevant necessary information, uh, including hearsay at hearings relevant 
or excuse me, hearings to review placement change decisions. Mm -hmm. And this does not include whenever um, uh, you're going for a termination of parental rights, correct? Correct. So hearsay evidence is not allowed in termination proceedings for the termination of parental rights, correct? Correct. Okay. That is correct. And that was a, a question that I've faced throughout the process of this bill. And I'm glad you brought that point mm -hmm. to our attention. That's uh, that's that's 100 percent correct. Um, Section eight and nine um, both do the same uh, same policy change. One's for periodic review hearings and one's for the uh, permanency plan hearings. Mm -hmm. um, section 10 reflects the same policy change found in sections four, six, seven, eight, and um, 10. And this would be to include hearsay evidence at the dispositional phase of a termination, excuse me, to accept all relevant and necessary info including hearsay evidence at the dispositional phase of a termination of parental rights proceeding, not the fact finding stage that determines whether the rights are terminated. Mm -hmm. Section 11 is um, similar to the previous one, but for post termination of parental rights adoption review hearings. Mm -hmm. And then section 12 um, is a lot of definitions are revised and brought up to date um, to adequately reflect those definitions found in other uh, parts of the um, Official Code of Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, section 13. Excuse me. We don't have a Section 13. Okay, this was an older version of the okay. line. Hold on so just one moment. We have a question, uh, Representative Sharper. Yeah, if they look in a folder, they have like the draft. That was the draft. That's why probably a lot of y'all are not on the same page, but this is a draft that's in our folder. So it's different than what we okay. should have. So we don't have, you don't have the LC? Well, I have it now. I have the LC 338763ECS, but in my folder was the LC 338495EC. That's what everybody else has. So, okay. So, so are we not working? not going to follow what he's doing. Okay. So what this is, is there, what, 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 which one should we be looking at, Senator? I am going off of LC. So apparently there is a substitute to this bill that we do not have. If, if the chairman doesn't mind, or chairwoman wouldn't mind, I, I've got Melissa Carter with me. Okay. And who's helped us and well, if, can help clarify the. Well, and I, I appreciate that, but if we don't have the correct version of the bill, um, okay. Right. I mean, he was explaining the sections good, but it's not going to add up with what. Okay. Was in our folder. All right. I see. I have the substitute here. So. Okay. You know, from him. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, all right, members of the committee, what we're going to do is, um, uh, we're just going to suspend for about five minutes uh, while we have copies made of the correct bill, um, and then we'll we'll uh, provide those out. <laughs>
Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get back um, to. Um, okay, so now what we should be looking at is LC338763 ECS um, is the correct uh, form of this bill that we should be looking at, SB28. Um, so we're going to run through it very briefly as we've, uh, there was uh, substantially, it's the same bill that we had seen pr previously uh, that Senator Hatchett had presented. There's just a few changes, so we're going to let him kind of breeze over. Um, kind of give us the overview um, of the bill, maybe highlight some of the changes that were made between the two versions, um, and then we'll be good. So over to you, Senator uh, Hatchett. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, and I appreciate the patience with this committee. Uh, the changes from this version and the previous version uh, that you saw, um, the first significance is in section three. If you look on line 55, Line 55 provides for a more precise phrasing referring to an order for temporary alternatives to foster care. And then lines 57 through 81, these proposed amendments are designed to conform the statutory scheme authorizing juvenile courts to enter orders for temporary alternatives for foster care, uh, that specific language. Um, this is to avoid potential problems with the court directing custody. Um, lines 57 to 59 would also or would allow the court to support any voluntary arrangement that a parent entered into with defects, which could include the child residing with the relative or other familiar caregiver. Um, if you continue down to lines 61 through 78, set forth the specific kinds of orders that would constitute a temporary alternative to foster care including ordering defects to provide services. Uh, changes at lines 103 through 105 and 108 through 110 tighten the procedural connections between temporary alternatives to foster care and required preliminary protective hearings and the timeline for dependency petition to file, for a dependency petition to file. Um, after section three, uh, the two versions are identical until you get to the definition section in section 12. Okay. Um, so again, this is just really adding in that hearsay statute where um, where CASA reports can be, um, it, you know, can be viewed by the judge um, and reports from teachers can be reported on by defects workers, that sort of thing, correct? Correct, okay. correct. So going on to section 12. Uh, section 12, sexual exploitation and trafficking a child for labor servitude. These two definitions are added to this code to comply with the Federal Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act as amended by the Juvenile Victims Trafficking Act of 2015. Uh, those terms are separately defined at, at lines 319 through 321. That's the labor servitude and lines 385 through 390, which is sexual exploitation and servitude. And like, like I said earlier, these were just added to comply with the federal laws. Okay. <clears throat> Section 13, once again, this is the sexual servitude reference. Section 14, excuse me. Yep. 14. And then if you go on there's one more addition. Uh, section 15, this act shall be effective on January 1st, 2022. This is a request from DFACS to allow them uh, time to make these adjustments known. Okay. All right. Um, members, I know we've had a bit of a rush. Um, I have a question from uh, Representative Reeves. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I just wanted to... Um, in regards to section three, for the benefit of the committee, um, this is a, a couple of years ago, I actually had the privilege of carrying the uh, temporary or temporary alternatives to foster care language, which was a, a brand new concept that our defects director um, helped come up with that has had a tremendous role in the reduction of foster children that we've had in Georgia over the last few years. Um, it 
it's kind of been a game changer in a lot of ways. And it's, uh, it was innovative. And I think that what this section three is very important because we were, we were kind of in a little bit of uncharted territory. And what we're doing here is we've had two years to kind of learn how this works and, and, and to, to better clarify exactly how the statute needs to be in place to, to perfect it is what I would say. Um, and so I think these are very important um, additions. And uh, this is something that, again, has been, has just, has really changed the landscape in Georgia. And I think that we'll continue to build on that. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions of the of uh, Representative Reeves? No? Okay. Does anybody have any questions for the author of the bill? Seeing none, does anybody on Zoom have any questions for the author of the bill? Nope. Um, okay. All right. Seeing that, the chair at this point, at this time, will entertain a motion. There is a motion to pass from Representative Reeves. Is there a second? Second. A second from uh, Representative Cantrell. All those in favor of passage of Senate Bill 28, LC 338763 ECS, uh, we'll signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, Senator Hatchett. I appreciate, the, I appreciate your patience and the patience of my committee. We are adjourned. <laughs>